So well, what's up guys, it's here here by Nino Orquaji and welcome back to another video of Call of Duty Mod Warfare 2 multiplayer and Warzone 2. In today's video, we're going to be discussing update 1.15 for both Mod Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, which is actually the season 2 update. We're going to get a couple of new maps, a bunch of new weapons, including a freaking ISO AR, a semi-automatic shotgun, freaking dual swords, kadachis, whatever the heck they're called, and a bunch more stuff, including a all brand new resurgence map for warzone 2 and i'm going to show you guys intel on the new season 2 battle pass here in modern warfare 2 and warzone 2. if you guys are excited for all these features and more make sure you guys drop a like in the video subscribe and turn on those post notifications on this channel i upload warzone 2 gameplay store bundles and even news and updates from time to time like this video so if this sounds good to you or you guys just vibe with my personality then go ahead and subscribe man I would love for you to be a part of all the action that goes on on this channel. But yeah, with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about when the update goes live. So the new update goes live at February 15th, 2023 at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and I believe 5 p.m. Uh, you know, European time. I'm not sure what the, uh, the whole thing is there. I think it's BST. You guys can do all the time zone differences and, uh, you know, adjustments for wherever you're at. And in case you guys are wondering how big this update is, it's around 22 gigabytes on PS5. So it'll probably be around that for all the other platforms. So just be ready for, for a, an update of around like 15 to 30 gigabytes, more or less, depending on your platform. And like I said before, this update comes with a bunch of new stuff, as we can see from this beautiful freaking roadmap. As you can see from the roadmap, the biggest highlights are definitely Warzone 2 and DMZ. Both of them are going to be getting the new resurgence map of Ashika Island. And it is resurgence, which means that even after you die, you can actually respawn if your teammates stay alive long enough. You know, they loot packages and stuff and you can respawn into the map. You don't have to play into the gulag or anything like that, like you would do in Almazra. And you can have a lot of fun that way. There's also going to be a new event known as the Path of the Ronin Challenges, which is actually pretty cool. This new event is very similar to what we saw in Cold War and Modern Warfare 2019 where there'd be like the little mini event that actually gives you pretty much seven challenges and if you complete these seven challenges you get like a gun screen, a weapon charm, calling card, sometimes a blueprint. But if you do all these seven challenges you can actually get the new crossbow freaking weapon from this uh, sort of event which is actually pretty cool. So it's not an, uh, through an annoying challenge, it's actually through a very easy event which I think is pretty awesome. And you can complete this challenge in both Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, which is blessed because there was only Warzone events throughout the entirety of like the Vanguard year, which is really dumb. In terms of new features on Almazra, you'll see the 1v1 Gulag return. It'll still be the same sort of uh, Gulag map. You know, it's just going to be you and somebody else and there won't be a jailer anymore. I believe if they'll go back to like the domination flag or whatever and you got to capture the flag before your opponent does uh, so that you win the match uh, at halftime or overtime, whatever the case is. Uh, we also got redeploy drones coming in mid-season and a bunch of other cool stuff, but a lot of the focus is on the new resurgence map. Uh, when it comes to DMZ, I'm not really all into crazy about DMZ. There's just a new boss. There's obviously going to be Yashika Island as a DMZ map. Uh, some new AI, a new faction if you own Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, and a new weapons case and probably new blueprints to earn, which is pretty cool. But I'm not really all focused on the DMZ, so let's go into what we really care about, the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. So in multiplayer, the biggest thing that I feel like is the biggest addition to multiplayer is rank play. Now, if you guys don't know what rank play is, this is actually the first competitive iteration of league play slash rank play in a Infinity Ward game, which is insane. And they did a really good job with it. Uh, so you guys see, you get uh, skill divisions, which, uh, you know, depends on the color that you're at. And these colors basically represent how skilled you are. So the purple one or the iridescent one is the highest tier. It's like what, you're basically one of the best. And if you get even farther than that, you're in the top 250 and you can be number one in the world. So you just compete against others in the competitive rule set and you can get freaking rewards like crazy. And these rewards look really nice. You guys can see from the descriptions. But you also get like operator skins, which look really cool. And rain play in itself, I can't explain in like under a minute because there's just so much to it. We're gonna have to like really engage with it when it comes out because it's really nice looking. Uh, we also got the raid coming. 
coming into Modern Warfare 2, but during the mid-season. Uh, in terms of multiplayer maps, we're getting Dome, which is actually a remake of the Modern Warfare 3 map of Dome, which is pretty cool. And we also saw it in Vanguard as Radar. We're also getting Valdar's Museum, which I actually visited, visited myself in LA when I went on vacation uh, the, a couple weeks ago. So that's pretty cool that uh, we're going to see, see this map again, even though we played it in the beta and they've given no explanation as to why it's not in the game until now. But hey, we got another map, Museum. And we're getting the battle maps of Almazra International, which is basically the terminal map in Warzone 2. And the Zaya Observatory, which basically has Afghan also in Warzone 2, which is just weird. Why don't they make them into multiplayer maps and add them into the game as well? I, I don't know. Anyways, we also got new modes of Infected, Gun Game, and Grind all coming throughout these next couple of weeks of launch here in Modern Warfare 2. And we're getting Drop Zone, All or Nothing, and One in the Chamber later on during the mid-season update. And in terms of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, I just wish they added more 6v6 maps. As you see, we're only getting two, at least for right now. Hopefully mid-season they give us another one or even two again. And if that's the case, I'll be genuinely surprised. But it just looks like they're focusing more on the new modes and like Warzone 2 in terms of resurgence and stuff. I just really hope multiplayer gets some more love because we need more maps. And, you know, we, we have a solid base of maps right now, but we deserve more. I'm just saying that. And I love the multiplayer in this game. I enjoy it, I'd say. And now for the last part of the roadmap, which is the best part. It's always my favorite part in all the roadmaps. We're going to go through the weapons, the operators, and the bundles, and essentially the battle pass here in this last part of the video. Uh, the five new weapons include the ISO Hemlock Assault Rifle, the KV Broadside Shotgun, the Crossbow, the Dual Kadachis, and we're going to have a weapon in the mid-season update, which is a Marksman Rifle, the Tempest Torrent, I think it's called which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, the new weapons here. They can actually unlock in the battle pass. Uh, here's the new battle pass in case you guys are wondering. The shotgun is located here in B4. The new assault rifle is located over here at B11. And the dual Kadachis are, you know, located in the middle at B13. So you can unlock the two more, two more important weapons, uh, you know, a little bit more earlier than the melee weapon. Because the melee weapon, I feel like most of us don't care about. But if you're that sort of enthusiast, then you, you have a sort of pathway for that. And I'll show you guys how to unlock it, uh, you know, in the video, you know, in the future video on my main channel when the actual update is out. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the guns. So we got the KV Broadside Shotgun, which is in Sector B4. And it's for free, of course. You don't have to buy the battle pass. Just grind through the tiers or whatever. And this is the fastest firing semi-auto firearm in the shotgun class. Destroys targets at close range with impunity. The KV broadside is all about positioning, as its rapid fire and damage output are only hampered by a short range compared to other choices in its class. So it's going to be like the AA-12 slash the Jag-12. Without question, this may be a strong weapon against heavily armored forces and DMZ and elsewhere, especially against Juggernaut, so that's pretty nice to know. Just be sure there's nearby cover to use between reloads, because it probably has a long reload. Against fellow operators, the KV broadside will add to the mix of solid close race options in solid multiplayer maps, small multiplayer maps, and in Almazra City. So the, the, the KV broadside shotgun should be pretty fun to use, and it basically is fully automatic, because it's a fastest firing semi-automatic shotgun. Should be a, fun, a lot of fun to use, and you guys already know, I'll be dropping MGBs, and hopefully a Warzone 2 gameplay or two on the new Resurgence map using this gun. Next up, we got the ISO Hemlock Assault Rifle, which is part of the ISO platform, and it's in Sector B11, of course, it's free as well. And this powerful and enhanced rifle from Expedite Firearms is designed to take both 5.56 and subsonic .300 BLK ammunition, providing battlefield advantage in any situation. So it's 5.56 ammo, so that means the new tracer pack uh, armor piercing rounds should take effect on this gun too, which means that you'll have tracer rounds, which is pretty tight. Uh, once unlocked, the ISO Hemlock will be a contender in an already deep assault rifle category, offering two different ammo types in addition to small and extended magazines for better versatility when constructing loadouts. So you're going to be able to change the ammunition in the magazine, or at least in the ammunition section, which would be interesting. For those looking to have a damage profile similar to the M4, Lockman 5.56 and SCV 5.56, the Hemlock can take 5.56 ammunition. Great for an operator who wants to be prepared for a variety of combat scenarios in all modes. 5.56 is the standard for a golden reason. And alternatively, the subsonic .300 BLK ammunition puts the ISO in direct competition with the M13. More suited for stealth situations such as lurking around DMZ, this ammo gives a bit more kick in exchange for hiding enemy elimination skull indicators, 
combined with a suppressor and any other attachments that you're choosing, a 0.300 BLK ISO Hemlock could be a deadly and silent addition to your arsenal. So that's pretty cool. You can choose between ammo types to make it more like the M4 Lockman 5.56 and the STB, or you can make it more like the M13 and the Chimera, which I think is nice for a variety, you know, for, for a gun to have. Next up, we got the dual Kadachi's melee weapon, which is that Sector B13, and it's free, like I said before. Uh, these swords, you know, they're dual wielded swords, basically, and you can move around, you know, the map, but it's a little bit, a little bit of a slower strafe and sprint speed. So you can, you can, you know, knife with these, and they have a longer range, but they're a little bit slower to run around with than with the regular knife. So it's up to you whether you want a knife with these uh, for a little bit more action, or if you want the standard knife. I personally just like the standard knife, but that's just me. And for the last weapon that we can unlock here in the launch of Season 2, we got the Crossbow, which is not unlocked in the Battle Pass, but you actually unlock it by completing all 7 of the Path Ronin event challenges, or you can purchase it through a store bundle. So that should be pretty easy to do. You guys don't know about the Crossbow, I mean, we've seen it in Model for 2019, We, I think, I don't think we saw it in Vanguard, but we saw it also in, uh, in Cold War. You could equip attachments on it and have explosive bolts, sticky bolts, or whatever the case is. Should be a lot of fun to use, and I can't wait to make a video with this gun especially. And then we also have one more new marksman rifle, the Tempest Torrent, but that'll be available in the mid-season update, as well as a new lethal equipment piece, the Shuriken. So that'll be stick around for that, and we'll have new camos with each of these weapons as well, so that'll be pretty cool to see what camos we get. So to finish things off really quickly here, for the new season, we're getting new operators, but the only new operator at least we're getting for the launch of season one is Ronin. We usually get three operators more or less each season since like Modern Warfare 2019 or something like that. And this is the first season we're only getting one operator, at least shown on the roadmap. Maybe they have something for us at mid-season, but we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, we're getting Ronin, which is pretty cool. Uh, you'll unlock him at tier one of the battle pass or tier zero, whatever the formality is. And of course, uh, you'll also get a tier 100 skin once you complete the whole battle pass. Uh, in terms of bundles, we have MW2 Pro Pack 2 Urban Veteran, which is, uh, this is one of those bundles where you buy it directly for $20, but you also get 2400 COD points, as well as a whole bunch of other cool stuff, as you guys can kind of see here from the bundle image, this really nice operator skin, which should look nice. Uh, for other bundles, we also have the Tracer Pack Ballistic Love which is the bundle that comes with the crossbow, as well as an SMG with tracer rounds as well, which should be pretty freaking cool. Additional bundles that we have is Tracer Pack Purple, Purple Jolt, which shows off this really nice skin for Callisto. So we're gonna see even more Purple Tracer rounds, which would be pretty cool. Uh, we have the Tracer Pack Red Fox, which uh, comes with this freaking fox ears for huts, which I think looks funny. We also have the Seven Envy bundle, which looks pretty cool here, and Gluttony. And uh, we'll see even more bundles in the future as Tracer Pack Dark Rituals, Tracer Pack Shinobi, and Meltdown, and more. So pretty cool bundles to see in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. We've covered a ton when it comes to season two, and I still wish I could talk for a lot more, but this video is already long enough. I always try to keep my, my videos on this channel to around 10 to 12 minutes, but as you can see, we're already past the 13 minute mark. So I'm just gonna call it here. I'll put patch notes in the description or in the pinned comment or whatever the case is if you guys wanna read through some of this, but these were the main points of season two, and hopefully you guys are excited as I am to see what season two is all about. Even though we didn't get as much as we wanted, we still got a good chunk of content to mess around with, and I'm excited to see you know what this future entails for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. And let's hope that we get more 6v6 maps during the mid-season update. Anyways, is this an L or a W update? Let me know in the comments section below and keep being big ballers make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe to see more wars on two gameplay and store bundles as i cover them on the channel here or if you guys just vibe my personality i freaking love you guys from the bottom of my heart keep being big ballers and i'll see you guys on the next one bye i love you all